Hey guys, this is Josh again. I got a Ruger 1022 here. I was talking with one of my buddies and he was saying, well, the Ruger 1022 is an extremely popular gun and I need to have a disassembly video of it. So here we are. We're going to do the Ruger 1022. There's no magazine in it. I already took that out, but if you got yours, do so. Rack it. See if you're empty. Um, with most of them, you got to put it into a half safe position. This one you don't, but I'm emulating that for people with newer models. Uh, if you have trouble getting the magazine out and you're not familiar with the gun, you would hold your hand in a position like this and there's a button on this side that pulls out. It's fairly ergonomic. The only problem is you have to have the gun in a specific position, otherwise it's really goofy and hard to do. That's why the newer ones have this. And this is an older gun with a lot of add-on parts to it. That's why it looks... A little like that. <clears throat> okay, we got two screws we have to take out. There's one on the bottom. If you have a standard stock, yours will screw all the way out and probably fall right out of the stock. So unscrew it until it's loose and then leave it alone. You got the barrel band screw. I don't know if you can see that in the video. That one, as you can see, I probably am going to have to replace pretty soon. Some of them actually, the old ones didn't even have barrel bands. That's not good. You want the thing held in two places at least, and this does it. And you can see there's actually a fair amount of wear there on this new stock from that. That means it's working. And it was tight, so I know that it wasn't just loose and wiggling around. Okay, we got it in the half safe position. We have the two screws loose or out. We have the magazine out. We know the gun's safe. Let's tear it apart. Okay, be real careful of pins. As with most Ruger 22s, um, they're held together with pins. It's not a bad design by any means, but it just... Just watch the pins. <clears throat> the next thing we're going to take off is the firing assembly or trigger guard, this part right here. As you saw, one of my pins is already falling out. I don't even need to knock that one out. Uh, you're going to need a pin punch, a small Phillips head screwdriver, or an Allen wrench. And knock these pins out. Um, yeah, that gets that out. Be very careful of this part, especially if you have an older gun, because the various different pins will fall out and you'll lose parts. Then your gun won't work. It'll be very bad. Um, this is the new polymer style. The older ones were aluminum. They actually called this um, stainless steel. That's a joke between me and Brownells right now. Um, this is as far as the average person should go. We're going to go ahead and explain how to do some of the other features, but my gun has been modified so that it holds together tighter, and a lot of these things are hard to take back off. Um, the barrel comes off. If you have a standard one, you unscrew these Allens, and then the barrel actually comes out, and you can change the barrel out or clean the breech or uh, sorry the chamber or whatever you need to do you rarely ever have to do anything with the 1022 um, just clean the barrel every once in a while don't bother taking it apart anyway um, after about 40,000 rounds this one had to get a new bolt and the spring assembly the spring assembly is this stuff down here you see the whole bolt handle I'm holding and that back there to take that out, you have to take this pin out. It's always tight. It's always a pain. Um, as you see, there's all kinds of wear marks there because I had to hammer it out several times. Um, I'm not taking that out because I have enough wear marks right there already. Once you take that out, if you need to change the bolt assembly, you pull it all the way back and then you lift it off. you got to be real careful or it'll just flop out of your hand. It, actually, the spring isn't that awful powerful. It won't go flying, but it'll flop over your hand. You, you could actually get a weird cut or something from the bolt. A pretty serious chunk of metal. Being this is a blowback gun, this is about 60% of what makes the action work. The other 40% or so is the rod and spring down here. Great design, very reliable, ridiculously modular and um, upgradable, as you can see with all these parts I have here that I'll explain in a minute. Be really careful of any of these pins um, and don't mess with this thing here. This is the internal extractor. There's a secondary extractor and ejector on the magazine. Um, ejector on the magazine, sorry. 
it probably won't be extracting from back there. Um, none of this really needs to be worked on. Don't mess with this. Unless you have to change a piece. And you need an armorer's video for that. Um, seriously. AGI is what I recommend. They have a very good one that's like 30 bucks. 40 bucks. Not bad. Uh, that's pretty much it. All these parts come out with a pin punch, but don't do it. You'll be really glad that you listened. Because you don't want to lose any of those parts. You won't have a working gun. It's a real simple gun. It's obviously a real cheap gun to make. Um, but it's good and reliable. This particular one will shoot a three-quarter inch group at 100 yards. Um, that's beyond the actual rifle's accuracy, but I've added several things to mine that make it do that. And obviously the 22 lr round is going to drop at that range, so you have to adjust for it. And I was shooting from a bipod. We'll go into different uh, capability and function changing or altering add-ons after we reassemble this guy. Okay, we have the trigger guard back on. Let's make sure it works. It does. Oh, goody. Let's put it back in the stock. One of the other super cool things about this kind of stock is it makes it actually easier to reassemble than having a full wooden stock. Barrel band back on, always first. That'll hold the gun together so you don't drop it and lose parts all over the place or whatever might happen. Screws back into its hole. And if you don't have a riser on it, I should have told you, fold your sights down. Because you're probably bonking them all over the table if you turn your gun apart like this. So if you're doing it later, um, remember to fold your sights down. I did. I forgot to say it. I actually have the riser, so it doesn't matter. Alrighty. You probably picked up on several non-Ruger parts on my Ruger gun already. Let me point a few of them out to you. The stock is a Butler Creek folding stock has the pistol grip with a storage area on the bottom obviously it has the folding pistol grip right there wrapped around that's really nice if you want to throw this behind the seat of your car um, if you need to use it in close quarter type thing home defense whatever um, it also gives you a different feel when you're shooting the gun if you just do it for the heck of it um, the stock doesn't actually cost any more than a regular stock so you might as well go with this one don't listen to what anybody says about wood being better than plastic. It's not. <clears throat> Polymer stocks are far superior. One, they don't have any weird effect from weather. Two, they absorb vibrations better. Three, they're cheaper. And you can add more features without making the stock more expensive. And a folding stock on a wooden gun is going to cause more wear problems. This one's great. Um, as you can see... The only real wear is around the mag well because I change mags a lot because I shoot it a lot. Um, I have a light for mine. It goes right on the UTG barrel mounted rail I added. That's real nice. You can put anything you want down there. You can put a foregrip. You can put a light. Anything that mounts on a Picatinny or Weaver rail. Obviously, you don't want much of anything Weaver down the bottom because that would be a scope. You see I've got a flash hider slash muzzle brake on the end of it. That does actually work. It'll make long range or fast shooting better. Um, supposedly it does increase the overall accuracy of the gun as well. Because there's less vibrations when you're shooting. Uh, I have the low profile riser tack rail. Again a UTG product. Um, this is a, about three, four times as high as the regular one. So that I can put a larger scope on here. Uh, if you have the standard one from Weaver, for whatever reason, it's only intended to hold a small, like a 30, 32 millimeter um, scope on it, or dot sight for that matter. Dot sights are a little easier because they don't go very far, because um, there's no real optics. I recommend a dot sight for any close shooting, fast shooting, um, anything like that, because dot sights are the fastest way to pick up your target and shoot. They're also the most... Um, the most natural feeling. There's a lot of different aftermarket magazines you can get for them. I have some Butler Creek ones here. These are 25s. They have little holes in them so they slide into each other. These are glued so they stay together. This is one of the 10 round. Um, they have little holes in them as well so you can fasten them onto each other. They end up making like a star shape. I don't particularly care for that but the magazine's fine. 
I don't recommend any of the other manufacturers' magazines because I haven't tested many of them. Ones I wouldn't use would be Ramline. I had two different ones. They were all plastic and they were all junk. They never worked right. Um, I also have the UTG semi tac sling on here because this is a tactical configuration side mount for the sling. It's real handy. And then on the side there so you can just sling it around. Um, this is also a UTG bipod. I prefer the barrel mounted bipods for a couple of reasons. One, because they just pop right off. Well, this kind. They just pop right off when you're not using it. So if the gun becomes too heavy because you're using it with the bipod, you just pop that off and boom, you got rid of six, eight ounces on the end of the barrel. It does make a noticeable difference. Um, and again, shooting with the bipod on from a rest of position makes a huge difference. So it's nice to be able to go back and forth. That would go in the barrel somewhere around here. They make a different handguard you can get. I really couldn't care less about it, and it would also interfere with your sights, so I didn't get it. But you can get a handguard that covers the top, makes it look more like an M1, which, of course, this gun is more or less modeled after, even though it's not gas-operated. There are literally hundreds and hundreds of add-ons you could get for this. Um, if you have any questions about those particular add-ons, the functionality, the availability, um, prices, Anything like that, I can go ahead and check that out for you. Um, any other questions, send them to joshjeffords at gmail.com. I uh, tried to shorten this video down just for upload size and so it doesn't get too boring. That's it.